Welcome to the Ramsey and Saeed Adalul Art Foundation in Beirut, Lebanon. Today we're doing the segment for Art Dubai's virtual platform. I want to welcome you to the foundation and tell you a little bit about what we do. Our mission from day one has been to inform and educate and introduce both local and global audiences to Arab art. Our mission has been the same since day one. It hasn't changed any uh, during the time of COVID. Uh, we will be walking through the space a little bit and uh, showing you some of the works here. This collection has been put together by both my father and my late mother over about 50, 50 plus years. The collection uh, over the last five years has been institutionalized and as a result our acquisition practices haven't really changed because my father's still around and he still likes to go to the auction houses and acquire pieces for the collection. The collection was put together really as a uh, more like a labor of love between my dad, my mom, and the artists that they love to collect over the years. So uh, as far as our loaning policies are concerned, we loan to museums all over the world. Uh, we loan to institutions all over the region. Uh, we do a lot of virtual work now because of COVID. Uh, so stay tuned for more virtuality on our platform, dafbeirut.org. People always ask us about uh, the important pieces in the collection. Uh, what are my favorite pieces in the collection? Honestly, I really can't say. There are over 4,000 pieces in this collection, and uh, to focus on any one, two, three, or even 10 of them is a, is a difficult thing. But we do have uh, artists from around the region that I tend to like, like Shaibi Atalal from uh, Morocco, like Inja Mehdawi from uh, Tunisia, uh, Nadia Linki from Tunisia. We have uh, Mahmoud Saeed from Egypt, one of the great artists we have here. Uh, Gazbiya Sirri, Tahiya Halim. Uh, we have loads of Egyptian artists. Of course, Egypt was the first modern school of Arab art in the region at the turn of the 20th century. As far as Lebanese artists are concerned, I would say uh, probably my dear friend Ayman Ab Al-Baki is on the top of my list. Uh, we have uh, great luminaries like uh, Jibran, Khalil Jibran in the collection. Uh, we have wonderful Palestinian artists like my dear friend Abdel Rahman Katanani who works with metal or uh, my friend Abed Abidi uh, or uh, any number of, of others that we've worked with. At DAF, we've been working on digital archives from day one. I, I come from a tech background myself, so uh, from day one, we started building databases, uh, uh, digital archives for our artists. Unfortunately, in this part of the world, in the Arab world, in the Arab region, there are no archives or references, real references for Arab artists. And so very early on, we decided to create these digital archives. Now, it so happened to be during the age of COVID, they came in really handy. So if you go to our website at DAF, Beirut.org. You can find bios, you can find press, you can find documents, you can find uh, exhibition information, CVs for the artists, video interviews, uh, the works. Uh, we have complete digital archives for almost most of our artists while we're working on them. We upload information almost daily uh, into the archives. There are over 400 artists that we deal with throughout the Arab world and putting their archives together has been quite a challenge considering we actually have to go hunting for these tidbits and gems of information that we have on our website. People often ask about the importance of archiving, why we do all the work we do, why we make all the effort we do. Well, art archives history and our responsibility as art archivists is to archive this history, archive this art, archive these artists' work. It's extremely important uh, for our history's sake and for references' sake uh, for us to do the work we do. Uh, people do get information in sound bites, that's absolutely true. And if you wanna get a sound bite of information, you can do that on our website. If you wanna delve deeper into an artist or an artwork, you can do that as well. But it is very important that this information is recorded somewhere so people can access it, so scholars can access it, so academics can access it, so people interested in, generally interested in the art can access it. That's why we do the work we do.
The artist's digital archives at dafbeirut.org have been extremely well received. Uh, we have been visited by about 176 countries. We track this on the back end of the website. Uh, we've had people interested in art from throughout the Arab world, from uh, as far west as Morocco to as far east as uh, Iraq and, and south, far south as Yemen and, uh, and Sudan. So we do get quite a bit of interest on the site. People always want more. They're always sending us messages telling us please give us more. So there is a great deal of interest uh, from scholars, from people who are generally interested in Arab art. Uh, we get a lot of traffic from the United States. We get a lot of traffic from Asia. We get a lot of traffic from Europe. And we get a lot of traffic from the region as well. So the demographics vary uh, quite a bit. And the interests obviously vary quite a bit with a collection this large. One of the things that we do very well here is, is to continue to augment and uh, uh, increase uh, the amount of content we have in our digital archives. So this process will be ongoing. Uh, right now, we've focused on the artists themselves. At some point, we'll shift focus to the actual artworks in the collection. There are so many things we plan on doing with this platform in terms of virtual shows, uh, in terms of uh, education about uh, certain periods uh, during uh, the art history of this region. One of the paintings I'm going to be talking to you about today is this beautiful piece over here by Jibran Khalil Jibran, the famous Lebanese poet, novelist, uh, writer, uh, romanticist. Uh, Jibran left Lebanon for the second time uh, in his life in 1914, uh, right at the beginning of World War I. And he went to New York City. And when he arrived in New York, his gallerist at the time, a fellow by the name of Alexander Morton, asked him what he wanted to paint about. And he told him, well, I don't want to paint about the war. I, I'm a romanticist. I'm a poet. I want to paint something romantic, like maybe the intellectual women of New York. So Alexander Morton told him, that's perfect. You can start with my wife. This particular lady here, Marjorie Morton, at the time was the editor-in-chief of a magazine called The New Order Magazine, which was the magazine of the then nascent Baha'i movement. She was a Baha'i. Uh, while she was sitting for her portrait with Jibran, she had many conversations with him about spirituality and about Baha'ism. And in fact, she managed to convert Jibran from a Catholic Maronite to a Baha'i. Uh, Jibran got, uh, as a result, excommunicated from the Maronite church. The Maronite church refused to bury him uh, because he was no longer a, a Catholic. And, uh, uh, in fact, he wrote actually one of his best works, uh, probably his most famous, The Prophet, after he be became a Baha'i because of Marjorie Morton. So she played a very, very important role in his life. Uh, people typically ascribe Mary Haskell to him, and he did have a very close relationship with Mary Haskell. But uh, he had an even more spiritual one with this particular lady, Marjorie Morton. So we're very proud to have this piece over here at the foundation. Welcome to the Egyptian pavilion of the Dalul Art Foundation Galleries. No visit here would really be complete without seeing some of our Egyptian modernists, our Egyptian pioneers. Egypt, after all, did establish the first school of modern art in the region uh, at the turn of the century. And uh, one of my favorite uh, artists from this period is Mahmoud Said. Mahmoud Said uh, uh, is probably the most valuable uh, of the Arab artists today. Uh, and uh, he's actually quite a talented painter. He started out as a lawyer, uh, became a judge. He was actually the uncle of the Queen of Egypt at the time. And uh, he became very prolific in his painting. And this particular piece, which is called The Bathing of the Horses at Rosetta uh, on the Nile, uh, is one of his more iconic works uh, and a beautiful piece we're proud to have here at the the Lul Art Foundation. One of the things we're very careful about at the Dalul Art Foundation is to make sure we have diversity uh, in terms of the artists that we have. And uh, we enjoy a lot of wonderful female artists in the, the Arab world, and we like to show them off. In fact, this particular room is full of nothing but female artists. The one I'm focusing on today is Juliana Serafim, uh, who is of Palestinian origin, uh, but uh, Palestinian Lebanese. 
She was quite a feminist during her time, and uh, she was famous for rescuing battered women from their abusive husbands. And uh, so we have quite a few pieces of her work over here. You can see the female shape is very prominent uh, in most of her paintings, and uh, she's very surreal uh, in her approach uh, to art. Uh, we love Juliana, and we love what she used to do and what she stood for uh, with women in the Arab world. So stay tuned for, for a lot more information, a lot more content coming at you at dafbeirut.org.